my name is Beck, and welcome to a video where I thought I would pick out a few books that I've really loved and then go actually I would like a different author to rewrite them. So here is the list I've kind of paired up authors and books that I think would benefit each other but I don't know how I'm gonna go because rewriting my favorite book is gonna be a really hard ask especially because I've already loved it so let's just hope I've made the right choices we'll see the first book on this list is Stormfront by Jim Butcher so I mean the Dresden Files in general if I could get an author to rewrite them because I know that I love these books they're one of my favorite series I'm a huge Dresden fan girl however there is one thing that kind of feels a little bit missing for me and that is the queer representation I really don't like the way that the male gaze dominates those gay jokes and the way that it kind of I guess integrates with Dresden's character in the way that he views women at the same time I can respect that obviously he's a man in his 20s and 30s and he's going to look at people that way so I can see it from a character standpoint but at the same time I would like to see Hank Green rewrite a few of those scenes because the way that he wrote this series I absolutely loved it and it has a bisexual main character in here and this is about a character named April May and one day she realizes that there is this like a statue on her way to work at three o'clock in the morning or her way back from work rather she's a graphic designer in New York trying to make a living and she makes a viral video with her friend online about this statue and it turns out that there are a ton of these statues that have just cropped up in the blink of an eye overnight and nobody knows their origin they're very alien-esque and so this is a first contact with alien story but it's told in a very humanized way alongside social media and parasocial relationship commentary which I loved and so when it comes to the scope of a story I think that this very much covers that because this covered basically the whole world but it also focused very individually on a character and I feel like that very much mirrors the way that Dresden is written it very much focuses obviously on Dresden our main character but then Dresden Files Jim Butcher has expanded that to build on the world building and all of the characters and so what you think you knew you actually only saw the tip of the iceberg for so I think if you throw in some of Hank Green's flavoring of his writing in there I think it would just take some of the Dresden Files books or some of the in them at least to that next level and that's what I would love to see. The next book another favorite of mine is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a very loved fantasy series. The Name of the Wind is a book that I adored for the lyrical writing style and I know that a lot of people love it for that reason. Some people may be frustrated by it. Again it's a book subjective opinion. You're not gonna love everything but I adored The Name of the Wind and I listened to it on audiobook as well. I loved both versions. However some of the things that I wish were a little bit more cemented were the secondary characters around Quoth and while I like experiencing scenes that are not just Quoth oriented it's hard for me to connect to the characters than it is to connect to Quoth. I feel like he's got a lot of more presence in the story. So the author that I would like to help have a hand, I guess not necessarily rewrite these books, but have a hand in influencing them in a different way would be Joe Abercrombie for The Name of the Wind because Joe Abercrombie writes such grimdark fantasy but all of it is so character driven that I really struggle to pin down a plot and same for The Name of the Wind I struggle to pin down a plot for that one as well so I think these will go very much hand in hand however because Joe Abercrombie really excels at having these multiple point of view characters and having them very uniquely carved out so you know exactly who you're reading from when you pick up the book. I think he would be really good at influencing the other characters in The Name of the Wind because I want to care about them a lot more and while I love Quoth like I said I just want to care more about the people around him as well and that he interacts with and I feel like Joe Abercrombie could bring that breath to the writing that is not necessarily not present but it's just not as strong as I would like so I think that is a flavor that I'd like to add to The Name of the Wind. And now I want to talk about another big book and that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. When I finished reading this, when I was reflecting on it, I thought I really liked this but I wanted to love it and be obsessed with it and the reason that I couldn't be obsessed with it was because it felt like it had a massive scope like it was trying to do so much world building which is a lovely thing I adore learning new worlds that's why I read a lot of fantasy but when I read Priori I thought hang on I wish it went more deeply than it did with its characters because while I guess I got to experience them I didn't get to I guess emotionally tether myself to them and so when they went through hard things and trialing things I didn't feel as stressed about them as I thought I would and maybe that was because it's also a fantasy standalone so I knew that whatever happened in this book had to be resolved in this book but at the same time I think that shouldn't matter it's 
a story. It's going to have ups and downs naturally. And so whether it's a standalone or not, I've loved standalones and I've loved series. So it stands to reason that I could have loved Priori as a standalone anyway. And I know that she's going to write more in this world. So I'm excited for her to revisit it because I adored the world building. But with the characters, I just wanted a little bit more. And I think Jim Butcher would really add that to this story because the way that he writes his characters in the Dresden Files, it makes them so believable and flawed and understanding. Each character seems like a bit of an archetype, especially when I first got introduced to them at the beginning of the series, but he really subverts those things and he makes you question things about these characters and he really develops them, especially even if they're side characters. He doesn't just develop Dresden, he develops everybody, but it just takes time for him to do that and to pay special attention because now that his series has gone past 10, 15 books, it takes a while for him to actually have focus that is not on the main characters, but I still appreciate everything that he's doing and I think that that would benefit Pyro of the Orange Tree because that's one of the things that I felt was a little bit lacking in terms of my enjoyment personally, the character development. Not that the character development wasn't there. I don't want to say like I'm trashing these books that I want another author to like rewrite because that's not the angle I'm coming at at all. And I think that Jim Butcher doing more character work and tightening what Samantha Shannon already has present on her pages would be beneficial because I loved her Bone Season series, her ongoing series, The Bone Season. I think her characters in that are quite present, but again, that's a series that has more than one book in it. So she's had more space to dig into that. Whereas Priori didn't have as much space as it needed because it developed a lot of the world and a lot of the magic and lore. So I think if there was a bit of a segmentation, maybe a duology instead of an actual standalone, we would have had more time to develop with those characters. But as it stands, obviously I really liked Priori, so it's not really a criticism, it's just something I thought would add extra flavour. The next series that I want to rewrite or have an author influence is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. Yes, there is a Brandon Sanderson book on this list, but it's not Brandon Sanderson doing the influencing, it's Brandon Sanderson getting influenced by somebody else. And that somebody else is V.E. Schwab because she wrote The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and that was very identity focused and very existential and it focused on art and your place in the world. And I loved that. I love how it explored those things and I loved her characters and how they were flawed. And so I think if you apply that lens to the Mistborn trilogy, there's already those foundations there because Vin is obviously very deeply into her identity and exploring that and trying to understand herself. And so if V. E. Schwab came in and put that existential twist on everything, I think it would be a little bit more tense even because at some points in the Mistborn trilogy, I remember my rating went up from four to four and a half to five stars as the trilogy went on in its installments. And so I think if it had that extra little bit of flavor, that extra spice of that extra existential, not dread, but awareness and understanding and development. I think if it had more of that in there and not just for Vin's focus on identity for the others as well, because obviously Addie LaRue, it wasn't just about Addie, it was about Henry as well in that story. So I think that could add more dimension to the Mistborn trilogy. And I think if it was sprinkled in there a little bit earlier, I probably would have given the first two books a five stars as well as the third book, if that makes sense. Okay, we've got two more left. So the next one is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I love Nevernight and God's Grave, didn't love Dark Dawn as much because it went off into a tangent of a love story rather than the focus on being an assassin. While that was still present, it just wasn't as strong as the first two books. So the fact that it went into like a love triangle romancy territory for book three, I think that could be easily subverted when it was rewritten by Brandon Sanderson or influenced by Brandon Sanderson because Sanderson doesn't really do romance plots or he doesn't do them particularly well and so I think he kind of not shies away from them but prioritizes other stuff when it comes to the world building the character development and the lore of that world so I think he could really excel in pushing Dark Dawn into what it needed to be in terms of it making Dark Dawn more like Nevernight and God's Grave because Nevernight and God's Grave were very heavily developing Mia and then in Dark Dawn it it kind of just fell away a little bit and I felt like things crumbled at some points there were up moments but the rest of it just kind of not tanked because that's going down but it just kind of went on the same level I can't think of the word right now but it was just the same flatline feeling so I think if Brandon was in there to like tighten this 
story and the plot and rehone the direction of these characters and kind of like let go of that love triangle element, I think it could have been a lot stronger. And then the last book on this list that I want to talk about is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is a modern urban fantasy story about a girl named Alex who goes to I think Yale University and there's a secret underground supernatural society there or multiple societies that she's got to kind of keep in touch with and keep tabs on so they don't start doing questionable stuff and she from a very young age can see ghosts so that's why she's kind of been tapped on the shoulder to do this because she already has some kind of supernatural awareness. So I loved this. I gave Ninth House five stars. I think I did a vlog for it ages ago when I first started my channel. I really enjoyed Ninth House but I think if you added Becky Chambers flair in there it could have been next level existential. I think I really like deep character heartfelt moments of soul searching and realizing the world around you. While Ninth House had a very direct and clear focus and it kind of had a plot around the outskirts which was like a little bit blurry I guess. It focused more on Alex, her trajectory and her identity and I find that Becky Chambers does that too. Not necessarily of ignoring a plot but focusing more on a character's identity and roots and where they're going next and who they meet and come across. And I think that could have been extrapolated more in Ninth House and that's why I think Becky Chambers having an influence on that would have been awesome because she could have really teased those things out. So kind of removing some of the blur around these characters instead of just only focusing on Alex. We still got other characters developed obviously so this is just me being very nitpicky unnecessarily. I just want Becky Chambers to collaborate with authors that I really like. Realistically there is nothing wrong with any of the books that I talked about but I just want my favourite authors to collaborate so come chat with me down below if there are two authors you would really love to see collaborate I would love to hear but thank you again so much for watching I'll come chat to you down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!